The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for Larry Pesavento. Uh, tough, uh, tough road to hoe here, but uh, let's get going. We've got the Dow futures up 24. The Dow closed uh, on Friday down about 110 points. On, th on Wednesday, day before Thanksgiving, I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving, 28,174 all-time high. That is important because within the context of what I look at, you know, Larry's looking at uh, Gartney and uh, looks at Fibonacci and he looks at uh, the expansion of the Gartney to the butterfly. Um, it's it, very interesting that so many times Larry and I find we're on the same wavelength using different techniques. Um, I look at arches and cups. In fact, let me just do this very quickly, and then we'll get to the nitty gritties of what I do. My service here at TFNN is the opening call daily newsletter, and at noon to 1 p.m. Eastern time, I have the, um, the open. No, that my opening call is my daily newsletter, and uh, the Tiger Technicians Hour, of course, is my 12 o'clock show. So here we go. I'm always looking for a straight line move that's either down or up. I'm looking for an arch formation or a cup formation. You can get a combination. It's just the three patterns, straight line, arch, or cup. You can get a combination where it makes what we call a lowercase h. I make it red because if it takes out the left side low, it can keep going down. And green, the inverse y pattern, where if you take out the left side high, it can go higher. So just three particular Patterns, straight line, up, down, arch, or cup, and then a combination. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we try to identify the lowest low bar, and then every successively higher peak gets labeled alphabetically in order up to from an A to a G, seven peaks. It's when it gets to the fourth highest peak, peak D, that other things can happen. So what am I looking for? Lowest low bar, count the peaks, fourth highest peak, other things can happen. It could recycle to a whole brand new buy mode, um, or it could. That's we we'll look at the dollar in a moment to see at a peak D if you had your uh, deepest declines. All right, let's get out of this, and I'll show you what we're doing. So we just had the cup formation. We actually did close above the left side high of about the 18th and the Dow. And um, went to 28,174, closed near that high, and that was good. So it's two sessions where it closed above the left side high. To me, that's important. Most importantly, though, I look at moving averages. And these moving averages, in this particular instance, here at the, at the bottom, a set of moving averages called the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. You can see that it turned down. I circled to say that it's now flattening out, and the st slow stochastic which is trading at 91%, and I say over 80% is good. In the 90% area is really good, and above 93%, 95% in that area is absolutely fabulous if the stochastic holds flat. If it starts to reverse and go down, you got to be careful. This is the daily chart on the left. In the middle is the weekly. You'll see there's a two trend lines going up here, green and red dashed lines. I call that the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. If it's on the way down, it becomes the inside track propellant zone or support zone. So let's just go real simply through. You see the different cups and arches, like a sine wave in inside an up channel. So it goes up, then it comes a circle, then it comes uh, arch, cup, arch, cup. And in this particular instance, you've had a very sharp move going right to the pink line, the dash pink line. That's the resistance line in the daily. I'm sorry, in the weekly. That's I'm calling this a brand new leg B, which says that we should pull back, then make a C, then pull back, and then make a D. And that could take us um, all the way into the end of December, maybe January, and then we can expect a much sharper decline. Uh, but the, the monthly chart is in leg D, 
And um, if there's a new high above 28,174 at any point in December, it continues this leg D. Let's have a look at the YM, which is the Dow Futures. That made a new high today. It went to 28,197. So it went above all other highs. And that says that in the monthly chart, the futures have gone to a leg D. That extends leg D. You can't get a big D with a lower high bar until January in the futures. Now we might have a divergence. The Dow might not make its all-time high in December. And then you got a divergence. But in the meantime, I'm anticipating that because of the strength, and I'm going to talk about it now because it is it is so important. Um, FG, let me just put this in here. So this is alternate count F slash B and a G slash C. All right. So what we're looking for, we're always looking for that fourth highest peak. It has your leg D in the uh, monthly chart. So it says, all right, so I'm being a little careful. That's when the yellow light flashes. It says, hey, in leg D, uh, just be realize that you can start to make a peak D at some point. That's all. Now, in the YM, we've just made a new all-time high. What did we do in the ES? We just made an all-time high. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Let me just check. You've got 31.55 on the 27th as a high. 31.55, so that extends this leg. And you've got 31.58, I love round numbers. And a round number high today, uh, overnight into this morning. And you've got this pullback. I guess again, it's a whole tariff thing, of course. We, yeah, yeah, same old, same old. Now what we're looking at is, if there was a peak here, and there was a new letter, you can't H. There's no H in the Chapman Wave methodology. You'd have to recycle. So this year as well is going to be a G slash C. The old uh, continuation of the pattern is a G. A new one would be a possible leg C. So what we're looking at here is. This, the the MACD is still strong in the E-mini, and the S&P is flat at 94%. Look at the uh, cash, SPX.X. Here we go. The cash trading right now at, uh, let's see, uh, trading right here at 3140.98 is the close on Friday. That sudden decline at the end of the day. Um, this, this becomes a very important moment. Why? Because if this recycles... Today, then you get your leg D. You finally get that recycle from there. This is called Chapman Wave Instant Restart. Um, and it goes to a D and says, are we? let me put it simply. I am looking for a choppy sideways with just fractionally higher highs with a chance of lower lows within a rectangle formation. And the best way I can put it is to show you, I do you, is it this chart? No, this this chart right here. This is the Dow right here that I show my subscribers every day. Um, hmm, I didn't draw it in here. Why did I do that? I'll do it now. And that says there's a really good chance that the Dow could be trading in a, in a kind of a rectangle formation, maybe fractionally high highs, but probably lower lows, but with really good support in the 27,700 area in the short term. That's about as clear as I can make it. I'll be right back. Basil Chap is sitting in for Larry Pazavento, the e mini futures, the Dow futures are up 27, and the SP futures. If you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS profile scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. So I'm sitting for Larry Pesavento, Basil Chapman. I'm the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon every day, Eastern Time. And I am also the author of the opening call daily newsletter, very comprehensive newsletter. So the Qs are trading up 15 cents at 205.26. That's the index 100. If you look at the NQ trading right here, there's a chance of a peak G, but it could also be a recycle G slash C, so they could go a little higher. But I've got a whole bunch of things that I wanted to show right now. Uh, these are more, uh, Chapman Wave automated levels that we will be looking at. So let me show you something. In the Dow itself, automated 28, 28,271 strong resistance. Um, in the weekly chart, it can go all the way to 28,361. It could even go all the way to 28,591 and 28,959 in the uh, monthly. But the one to deal with right now is between 28,172 in the 120-minute chart and the daily at 28,271. If you look at the S&P, the resistance at 3156 is strong. Uh, we've already gone a little bit higher. We're into 3158 uh, in the futures, and the cash has gone to 315426. So it hasn't broken that yet. 3155 in the 120 minute chart, 315662 in the daily. So that's the resistance to Pierce. Going well above that says you've got, even then, you've got a whole series of resistance levels in the weekly chart. 3162 is the upper one. Monthly chart can go 31.84. So that doesn't give you time. It just gives you price. If we look at the QQQ, the NDX 100 is 205.95. Uh, we've gone to 206. I think 09 is the high uh, from Wednesday. And so we're watching that 205, 07, 97, no, 07 in the weekly chart, then 210.55. Um, the monthly chart only has 2 or 4.77, and then it breaks out. So this is going to be very interesting. You got a whole bunch of resistance levels in the 120-minute chart at 206.32. We're trading right now at 205.29. Um, let's look at the IWM because the IWM itself was showing uh, um, independent strength and did a real nice push to the upside as the others were stalling, but at 163.03. That's the daily resistance automated Chapman Wave 
resistance level. 163.42 is the 120 minute chart. So we're in that area and trading right now at 162.24, uh, 47. Hey, that's not bad. Uh, we might see that the IWM is going to take a little bit of a leadership role if there is a stalling in the key and the key major indices. Now, I want you to go through, uh, so I've done that. Now, let's just do something else. I want you to show you that within the context of uh, the different commodities, look, wheat, wheat's having a very strong move. Uh, not at the moment, it's down one and a quarter, 50.540 and a half, but it's come off the 498 level. Very nicely, it's up in the 540s. It's a leg C. It should still go to a leg D. Same thing in the weekly chart. It should still go to a leg D. But wait a minute. Look at the soybeans. Soybeans trading up four and three quarters right now at eight, eight one and a half. Look at that low that was made. That low isn't the low that was made back in, I think it was uh, May. Yep, May. At 828, um, this is a continuous contract, so the actual price might be a little different, but within a, within a couple of dollars. And then it runs all the way to the high of 960, and that was in October. Pulls back very sharply under 881. It goes to a low of um, what is this? Today's the day. Yeah, on the on the 29th, on Friday, it had a low of 875 and three quarters, trying to rally. So it until it can go above eight nine, I would say eight eight ninety three, trying to tackle the eight ninety eight fourteen period exponential moving average in the daily chart. Uh, it's a real problem. It's had a, it, it's just this is a big failure pattern. Uh, if you look at corn, corn trading at three eighty and three quarters. Uh, down a half a point. This is coming off a low, a trough gene in the Chapman Wave methodology, at 373 round number. Um, that was on Wednesday. So at 380, it's acting much better. It is testing the 14 period moving average. But I want to see the weekly chart make a lowercase h. Remember the dreaded h? We were talking about the h pattern. Uh, I want to see this move to the 392 area. And it should do that by Wednesday, Thursday at the latest. But it cannot take out the low of 372. Um, that's that, that's there. Uh, we're looking at the dollar. Dollar's down just a little bit down six pennies at 98.21. Remember how important those Ds are? We're making a peak D if there's no new high above 98.54 today. Um, look at this. On the 1st of October, 99.67 peak D. Huge move down to 97.11. Trough D bounces to a peak C, pulls back, and then goes to another D. That's the daily. Weekly chart makes a peak D at 99.62. Uh, week of the fourth, that's on the 1st of October as well. And look, it's pulled back quite sharply, but it's holding in the up channel. And look at the dollar. Leg D goes to a peak D with that Friday close uh, underneath um, for all of the month. It did not close above that 99, uh, 19, sorry, 99, 99 area. And look at this in the monthly chart. Squeeze, squeeze. Look at that peak D, January of 2017 at 103.82, plunges to 88.25, uh, leg B, trough B, and then it starts up again. We actually long for subscribers from April of 2018 at about uh, 90.07 via the uh, UUP trading vehicle the fund. And now it's made that peak D. We've only taken just a little bit off. I like the dollar. I think the dollar is holding very well. Um, it's, in a, it's in a consolidation after a very strong move from 88 to 99, 11 points in, in a currency. That, and that's big. Look at the euro, EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair. A, a nice bounce today at 1.103, up 0.02. And I bet that weekly chart says, wow, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, it's trying, it's attempting to make the low that was made back in October at 1.08, was it? Yeah, 1.087. Um, is that going to be the low for this particular uh, period going into January? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it, it, I can see a pullback. It doesn't have to be taken out, but it's only if the um, euro dollar currency pair can trade it in, instead of 1.103 right now. If we can get to 1.112 by the third week of December, perhaps the fourth week of December, I say, hey, that's much better action. Then you probably will see the dollar be pulling back a little bit more. USDJPY, this is the yen, dollar yen currency, finally made that leg D we've been waiting for in the weekly chart. There it is. 
And let me just check this. Yep, leg D. Just above the orange 200 period exponential moving average, uh, that could be resistance now. We're going to watching it closely. It's helped the monthly chart, the daily chart. I, I'm FG. I'm just for now going to call this A and B. Um, so far, it's acting quite well. So I'm not going to get too carried away. But at 109.59, it needs to get to the 109.88 area. Actually, it needs to get to 109.90. And then I'd say, great, that's a really good action. If it starts to pull back under 109, that's a real problem. If you're looking at the TLT, the TLT uh, is trading down 2.31 at 138.11. Wow, that should be helping the market. Not really. Wow, 2.31. Let's look at bonds. That was quick. Bonds down two points, still 1.9 at 1 and 1930 seconds. Oh, I'll talk about that when we get back. Basil Chapman, City for Larry Pesavento. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, Ron Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento. Markets open, Dow's up 53, S&P is up 3. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting session. A couple of reasons uh, I'm looking at. Let me just get back to the Dow here. Oops, let me just get rid of this. Okay, there we go. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, I wanted to type that in. Okay, so the Dow is up 42, but it's going to be the fact that I want you to look at this. You see these moving averages here? This is nine, the green line, the nine period moving average, and the black line is the 14 period moving average. 
until those start to get closer together, until the green starts to come down and and really break underneath the, the, the black one, faster moving average going under the slow moving average, you've got internal strength. And that strength could be pop-ups. It, it says at this particular point, you haven't got, you have other technicals that are suggesting there's weakness, like the MACD slipped negative. Stochastics actually pull back a little bit, still 92%. That's very good. So there are a couple of other uh, indicators that are saying, be a little careful here. Um, at the same time, there is residual strength, and that residual strength can at least prop the market up so it doesn't break down severely. Oh, it can give you sudden bursts of energy as it usurps that energy while we wait for this green line to turn down. That's the way I'm looking at it. So um, within that context, I wanted to show I had a question about LC, which is live cattle. Um, it's made a peak uh, at this particular point from Friday's high, pulled back, back a bit at 125.95. But that, that weekly chart is still very strong. So it's a buy, uh, already it's a buy mode in the weekly chart. Monthly chart, it's single leg A to the upside. That's good. So the main thing is at 125 right now, 121 to 120 is really very important support. And it's holding quite well. It could be pulling back a little bit here on the short term, but that weekly chart is still suggesting uh, there's going to be further strength. But I am looking at this. You see this rectangle right here, right here. It's suggesting that, almost like the Dow, that there should be some trading within this rectangle at some point fairly soon. All right. Now let's go to um, LH, <clears throat> Live Hogs. This candle from Friday, what a huge candle. Um, one of the biggest candles we've had in quite a while. And it's got, um, it's got a long wick on the upside, big body, and a long wick at the downside. Uh, <clears throat> Looks like a yawn. And all I can say at 68.45, up 0.27, you'd have to see a move into the 69, 90, 70.30 area for this to say, oh, okay, I'm ready to at least attempt some kind of a rally. At the same time, I think the downside, the 66 to 65 area should be good support. So this could be a sideways move, trying to build up momentum with a candle, the doji candle from last week, to try to build some upside strength. Uh, question I had, yes, let's go back to the U.S. This is the um, <clears throat> the bonds down 1.1930 seconds, at 157.1330 seconds. You see this H pattern with the left side low taken out. Then there was a rally attempt. See these moving averages under that? And that's suggesting to me, <clears throat> TNX.X, let's go to the 30-year yield. What a big move. So this yield is in ABC. This is in leg, leg. We had a peak F at the top on the November the 7th. It hit 1971. That's 1.971%. Pulls back to a low of 17.30, 1.730 on the 20th. Retested at 1.731 on the 26th. So all of this is leg A. Then it goes to peak A. A leg changes to a peak once you have a lower high. So that's A, peak A, peak B, new leg C. So this is going to be very important because it's saying that yields are, um, <clears throat> are running quite sharply as uh, the bonds and the TLT pull back quite sharply. And at the same time, I just need to look at something here. Yep, good. And at the same time, we are looking at um, my theory usually is that when the volatility of stocks gets to investors, you tend to see money flow from stocks into the safety of bonds. This is not happening right now. Market's a little bit weak. Dow's only up 24. S&P's down 52 cents, 63 cents. And yet, look at this. You've got um, you've got a big gap down. So this is something, and I, I to my subscribers, to my opening call over the weekend, I showed them the chart of, let me just show you this one right here. Recent. <laughs> Um, there we go. <clears throat> so this chart here with the black background shows you 
the yield, the white is the triple, is the is the um, thirty-year T bond TYX. The brown is the ten-year TNX T, T, T note, ten-year yield, and the five-year yield, the F of VX cyan color right here is below. So this one is saying big move up on the day for yields. But within the context of what, what's been going on, we're really in a sideways pattern with 24.43, 2.443 as the yield high uh, from about four weeks ago and way, way down at the 1.98 area, I think it is. You've got the uh, the low of the 30. But this is going to be interesting. Wood, the iShares Global and Timber Forestry ETF, made a peak B in this rectangle formation, and it's kind of stuck. In fact, it's up 11 cents right now at 64.96, but it needs to break above it to start an C. And the Philadelphia Housing Index, HGX, is pulling back 3.27, the 3.54 after making a peak E at 3.62.82. And I'm suspecting that the um, home builders are going to have a bit of a problem. Question I had here was, uh, Basil, could you look at the Feb hogs and cattle, please? So give me the symbol. I, I, let me just first do this. I just did LH. And LH is, you should be within a couple, which should be very close in price. I'm at 68.07. You're probably um, maybe a point higher or something like that. Um, I, I don't see anything yet for the hogs, Ruby. So if you could just give me the uh, symbol. AB, what did I, ABC? I, I, I can't guess right now. So um, as I see it, hogs are still having a problem. And until you can get... The weekly chart is the one at 70 points and trading at 67.92. So you can give that a relationship to what you'd be looking at for February. Um, and until you can get to 70.81, 72, in the 72s, I think it's just stuck in a range for now. And I just did this. If you look at the cattle, and here again, I don't remember the cattle. Oh, LHG. No, LHG. Uh, do I do this LHG 20? Yep, there it is. Okay, same thing. So 67, 97, we're real close. It's the same thing that I'm talking about. Within that context, you can see that there's really no strength. And what I would normally do, you know what I do? I grab the outer limits. When I see a big candle like this, I go like this. I grab the top, I grab the bottom, and I say, okay, until this is a decisive trade, two out of three bars, doesn't matter what the time frame is, two or three bars above the resistance, in this case, for the LH, the 29th high was 69.325. Until you can see two good closes out of three above that high, this is just stuck in a rain. So be careful. To stay if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Hi, folks. So we're looking at the, oh, this Basel Trap and seeing for Larry Pesavento. Yes, trade what you see, but I'm doing a show today and I couldn't make it. So we're looking at the E-mini down 10 at 31.33. And what I said to, to subscribers and also sent over to, uh, did I do that? I think I did. I think I did this. Yes, to the den is the E-mini e December. Uh, what I wanted to show was how, uh, here we go, the E-mini trading at we had those two round numbers 3155 round number that was on the 27th pulls back sharply there's 120 minute chart on the right and today we did 315800 another round number high the peak f pull back really sharply this is a brand new move this is only a new leg a to the downside and this is the weekly chart you see making new highs today in december in the E-mini, oh, this is going to be so interesting. So the S&P did not do that. Oh, I, only once really ever do you get this kind of, I've had it with the Dow, with the Dow Diamonds, the DIA, made a peak C and the Dow did a peak D, or maybe it was the Dow that did the C and the Diamonds did the, the D, and then you had a very sharp pullback. Um, and if I hadn't picked up, that there was a D, I might have missed that down move. In this particular instance, it's going to be really interesting because for the month of December, let's just say the whole of December goes by and we're in a fairly tra small, trade small trading range-ish, right? Uh, th 3,080 on the downside for the E-mini. It's not a big deal. And on the upside, maybe it doesn't make a new high on the cash. And the high of 31, uh, let me write, type this in, 31, because we still don't know, the day's young. There we go. And the height of uh, Wednesday, the 27th, 31.54.26. So let me put that in. 31.24.26. Okay. And now, no, 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 no. Couldn't be. I just made a mistake. 31. 54.26. I was going to say, what on earth? 54. So let's just say we go to 31.60, 31.65. All right, just 10 points high, 100 points in the Dow. Um, I'm still thinking that there's going to be a trading ban. And one of the reasons for subscribers, we have so short positions uh, in two key indexes, um, is because I don't think they're going to break specifically um, to the upside to start a brand new move to the upside. They can have a residual bounce. I look, I look at the market in waves, like the ocean waves, and it's as if the tide um, has started to turn and you get these rogue waves that don't see, I always have an expression, a rogue wave. Um, 
there's a sign at the beach that says high tide at noon. Uh, so you get to the beach at about 12.06, and you say, okay, tide's turning. You go to your favorite rock, and you go right to the edge of your favorite rock because tide is about to turn down. And you get your, you got your sunglasses on, you got your suntan lotion on, you got your favorite book, you got your sandwich, you got whatever it is. Um, and you get your towel, you put it down. And as you're getting ready, cuss, splash! And you, you, you're all wet and you wipe your glasses. You're trying to see what's going on. Tide seems to be going out. It's a one rogue wave. They didn't see the sign of the beach that said high tide at noon. So, uh, and then the tide goes out. So there could be some isolated, you know, sprinkles of slightly higher highs. That's what I'm, I'm looking at in the shorter term. Overall, let me just go back to this and get out of this 120 minute chart right here. Um, overall, the S&P is only, look at this, monthly chart, the S&P is only in leg B. That should still go to a C and a D into 2020, so I'm still very bullish going to 2020. Shorter term, I'm getting a little cautious. Um, the Dow's the only one in D. Look at the QQQ, the NDX 100. Um, down to 93 cents at 204.19, high of 206.05 on the 27th. Uh, only a peak C in the weekly chart and a leg C in the monthly chart. I have to say leg because you have to wait all of December before you can say it's a peak C or the leg C continues. Look at the IWM, still showing some residual strength, but now it's down 9 cents at 161.67. Also made a little bit of a top. You see the rectangle? I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna come back into the 158s over the coming weeks, test it, and then maybe we'll get ready to peak C maybe this week if there's no new high and uh, leg C in the monthly. However, monthly, is uh, this is the one without the New York Stock Exchange, the IWM, the Russell 2000. 173.39 was the high in August oh, for the IWM. 125 smashed to the downside in December. Right is all the way to this recent high in the 163s. And um, the, the MACD has not yet turned up across positive in the monthly chart. And the stochastic is only a 66. So it's got a lot of work, but that weekly chart has really improved a lot. So maybe we will see some internal and residual strength in the Russell 2000. Had a couple of questions. Yeah, I don't. This is the um, Deutsch. This is the um, Dow Jones German stock index. So it, it's got the same pattern as the, uh, the DAX. I don't get the DAX here, but the DAX is. Dropping sharply is down 4.31, uh, down 1.04 percent. That's easier to do it that way because the prices are completely different. This is at 48.53. But the high today was the recovery high, not the all-time high, just a recovery high, and that was at 415.88. So it's down seven points from the high intraday high. So and I've got this as a possible G. MACD is very weak. Stochastic is very weak. Not very. It's weak at 73 percent. Weekly chart is still very good. But I wouldn't be surprised if you've got a pullback coming here in the DAX. So remember, I'm talking about the fact that these particular moving averages, and I know that for those of you who are already uh, students of Larry's work, you'll never be talking about moving averages. I talk about them all the time. Everybody has their own techniques. Just stick whatever technique you use. Sometimes add something to as an intrigue, something to follow, to something to, to really test to see if you can add it to your skills. But look. This in the S and P, the 31.34 right now, down 6.60 is a little bit better than it was earlier on, but the 31.28 is a nine-period moving average. hasn't come uh, down to that yet. Uh, 31.28, yeah, 31.32 is the low today so far. And look, 31.17, 3,117 is the 14 period moving average, and I suspect we're going to be coming down. The is internal strength based on these moving averages, but I think that the tide has started to turn, at least in the shorter term. As I say, one of the reasons why I had subscribers um, go short uh, last week, a particular index, uh, we've tried twice to short the Dow, but now we are short the Dow. And I, I do think that uh, there could still be balances, but I got a feeling that the upside is limited. Got that out the way, I said it enough times. Uh, next question I had was, um, could I look at copper HG? High grade copper is pulling back. It's down 0.01 at 2.65. Um, that look, this is the daily chart. There's your like an H pattern, right there. 
And I suspect that, um, like Wood, the iShares of the Timber and Forestry ETF is a little bit vulnerable here. So if it breaks under 2.63, 2 that's a real problem for, for uh, um, copper in the shorter term. And it also messes up the weekly chart, which is still in that uh, in the rectangle formation. And the monthly is really it needs a lot of work to improve. Dow's down 23, S&P's down 8.23. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for the one and only Larry Pesavento. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for Larry Pesavento in this last segment. Let me just go through some things quickly. You see this rectangle formation? Yeah, this is crude oil. It streamed up to a peak D, a second peak D. The first one was 61.08 back in July and then pulled back sharply. And then another one in September, 63.14, pulled back sharply. And now what we're looking at is this rectangle that it keeps coming back into. It stayed there. It's up $1.20 at 56.37, but it had a huge down move on Friday. So this, watch the crude oil because I think it's stuck between the 58s and the 54s. If it breaks either one of those levels to the upside or downside, then it can extend. But I think it's really stuck in the range. Um, I just had a, a question. I, I, was, um, I am the speak, guest speaker at the Boston Investors Group. 
uh, over at MIT, Cambridge, uh, tomorrow night. But because of the snow, we just don't know yet. There's another snowstorm coming in later today, whether or not it'll be postponed. So I will uh, maybe I'll know by my show at noon today uh, whether or not again can be, it's postponed. But I'll let you know that tomorrow morning, and uh, certainly subscribers, I'll let you know in my newsletter tomorrow morning whether it is tomorrow night, 6:30. Uh, it's, it's a potluck supper and uh, was well, potluck food, whatever it is, and. Um, as at 7:30, I'm the speaker, but it might have to be postponed. We'll let you know about that. You can go to, you can check it out at the Boston Investors Group uh, front page of their newsletter. So, uh, with that said, um, I'll be doing my show at uh, at 12 o'clock noon today. Let's just look at what, what what's going on at this particular point. The Dow's it's not down much; it's only down 26, but it's starting to show signs of of weakness, but not yet in the key moving averages. And that's going to be really important. And that's number one. And number two is in the in the weekly chart is holding well. It's the same thing for the S&P, same thing for the Qs. So um, what happens over the next two days, if there's a very sharp sell off by the end of the day, it says, yep, choppy range and um, uh, NUE. Let me just see this question as I'm going to the break. Yeah, this is a new breakout. This is leg um, C in the, for new, new, um, new. Uh, what is this? NUE is um, this is a steel show, steel, um, steel. Yes. So the, 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 it's improved. I'll do more of it in my show later on today at noon. So thank you for being here. I uh, hope Larry is back tomorrow. In the meantime, Basil Chapman sitting here for Larry. And have a great day. I hope to see you at noon in a couple of hours' time. Thanks for being here.